Well, I'm really excited to be back. My camera was broken for a couple weeks and now it's working. So we're gonna answer the question today. If you push a thing, will it tip or will it slip? And the problem presents itself like this. This is you here and you need a haircut. And you're still cheerful about it though and you're pushing this block and the block is, let's say it's a blue block and you're pushing it right here, and we'll define some parameters of the block. Let's say uh, the block has some width, capital W, and some height, capital H. Probably also has some mass somewhere, probably centered in the middle to make it easy, and here's the height at which you push. You're pushing that much above the floor. So. I, uh, <laughs> sorry to confuse um, the slipping in, in two different ways, but when I think about a physics problem, I think about myself falling off of a roof. And if you've ever begun to fall off of a roof, you kind of panic and reach for things. And so I guess I want you to think about what you would reach for if you're trying to decide whether this block will go whoop or whether it will go when you push it at this particular height, what are the physical principles that you could reach for? And I always like to reach for momentum first, but this doesn't feel like a momentum problem. Um, I also like to reach for energy and this doesn't, <laughs> gotcha, this doesn't feel like an energy problem either. But I'm thinking it probably involves friction, right? So let's put the force of friction here and maybe there'll be static or kinetic friction, I don't know, we'll work through that. And it probably has to do with forces, it definitely has to do with forces. So I'm thinking about net force and it also may have to do about with twisting, so I'm thinking about net torque. Now, my engineers will recognize that as a moment. So whenever I say torque, uh, just think moment if you're an engineer. <clears throat> so. If we're thinking about net force and net torque and friction, the next thing to do is a free body diagram. So let's go over here and create a free body diagram. Maybe I'll leave it so that we have a little bit of room to do some equations also. The free body diagram looks like this, and I like to put a center dot, but the issue is we always used to put forces on that dot to show that they act on the center of mass, but we have some forces that don't act on the center of mass, so I'll we'll have to be more careful here. I'm pushing that direction, so I identify this spot right here as the axis, and I'll put that on the free body diagram as well. That is the axis. Wow, my spelling has really gone down. All right, let's see. Axis right there. And then, of course, we've got mg acting downward at the center of mass. Uh-huh. Yep. Very good. And then we've got the applied force, which is acting at this height h. We can call that F A, and then we've got um, ooh, we've got a normal force, and I'm kind of thinking the normal force is going to be similar to M G. I don't want to tie myself down at this point, but there's the normal force. What about um, the frictional force, right? If if I'm pushing this way and the block, the box kind of want to stay, wants to stay where it is, there'll be a force that direction, and so I'll put it right there. That's F sub s initially, and maybe it will become f sub k, but that would be slipping, and the, it's premature to conclude that that's going to happen. So let's look at these four forces and their interaction. My first conclusion is that this box is not going up or down. So I'm gonna write down that the net force in the y direction is zero. So let's see, forces in the y direction include the normal force and mg the other way. So I can say then that the normal forces mg. Okay, great. Super Dr. Shoes. Just started off slow for us. That's great. That's great. Um, next up, I'm kind of also thinking that there's a torque. There's a torque. Ooh. What if we say that the torques are equal? Then we'd be arguing which torques? Which torques? Hang on. Hang on. My thought is that the torque of mg, this torque right here, uh-huh, the torque of the weight is, well, it's gonna be mg times, see where it acts? It acts at a distance away from the axis. What I'll call it, uh, it's acting at a distance r perp from the axis. So here's mg. And if I draw the line of action of the force, the closest it ever gets to my axis is this distance r perp. And so I'm gonna multiply mg by r perp, which in this case is w over two. So it's mg 
times capital W over two. That's the torque from MG, and it's counterclockwise. It would tend to rotate about the axis counterclockwise. Therefore, it is a positive torque. All right. And uh, let's see, well, the next step is to look at, oh, you could do it in more complicated ways. You could say this is the R vector right here, and then you'd have to take into account this angle right here. You don't wanna do that though. You wanna look for R perp all the time when you can. All right, so let's look at the torque from the normal force though. The torque from the normal force, oh dear, the torque from the normal force is however big the normal force is times where the normal force acts. Oh man, R perp from the normal force is the same darn number, W over two. But, but it's a negative torque because it would tend to rotate the system clockwise about the axis that we've defined. However, but however and wherefore you have mg, equals the normal force. So you're going to argue to me, oh, this is really frightening. The torque from mg is the same value as the torque from the normal force. That's weird, right? Because it makes it seem as if these two torques cancel out and the force of static friction, that has no torque at all because it's acting at the axis. If you're arguing that maybe it acts in the middle or maybe at the side, whatever, the line of action still goes right through the axis. So the frictional force is not going to rotate the block at all. But there is an applied force. So if these two torques are equivalent, then any arbitrarily small applied force will rotate the box. But you know that's not true. You need to put a certain force on every box to get it to rotate. What's going on here? Let's cut to a little adventure that I had earlier today. Ah, oh, dang it! My hand's stuck underneath a 1990s laser printer with bricks piled on top of it. Can I get a little help here? Yeah, I got you, Doc. Ah, that's nice. Thanks, Eric. No problem. So I guess what I'm saying is, if my hand is stuck here under the printer and a force is applied here, then the normal force changes its location. Like maybe the normal force becomes greater over here and less over here. Let's see if we can make that happen in practice. So tell me, and remember, this is for posterity. So please be honest, how do you feel? It hurts a little bit. <laughs> Would you say equally on both hands? A little bit more on the right hand. Okay, that's interesting. And if I push horizontally from the left side, mm, mm. how do you feel? The right hand hurts more. Okay. <sighs> and if I push horizontally from yep. the right side, mm -hmm. what, tell me, what do you feel? The left hand hurts more. Sir. I see. That's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right, so now we begin to conclude that this normal force, and it really fits in with my idea of normal force as a response from a substance. The table just says, no, you can't go through me. But if I'm pushing here, then the normal force doesn't actually act in the center or all along the bottom or something like that. If I'm pushing here, then suddenly the normal force acts entirely at the axis. Now, what does that mean? If the normal force is acting entirely at the axis instead of in the middle, then the normal force has no torque. If that's the case, if I'm pushing sufficiently that the normal force has no torque because it acts only at the axis, then we find that the only two torques in the problem are the applied force and mg. And those two torques, if they balance, then we'll have the situation where it's just about to tip. And that's what we need to talk about, the just about to tip situation, so that we can investigate tipping or slipping. So here's where we'll go next been some discussion about slipping versus tipping, and I just wanted to clear everything up. This is slipping. This is tipping. Right, so the normal force is still mg, but it's torque. The normal force's torque is zero. 
Uh huh. So that's just begin tipping, and that's nice because it means that uh, if you have a coffee mug and you set it on your desk, and somebody walks by your desk, creating a very slight force that direction, it won't tip over. Otherwise, it would. But the normal force immediately shifts over to here. In the situation we had before, where the normal force was directly under mg, those guys had canceling torques, and we had only one force right here. That meant any arbitrarily small force would tip over your coffee. We just don't want that, and it's not going to happen, so that's comforting. Okay, so then what we know is, okay, then, <clears throat> so, I say so a lot, don't I? Torque of the applied force is equal to torque of mg. Again, well, let's go with this coffee mug. You've got mg here, you've got the axis of rotation there, and you've got an applied force right there, and those torques are equal between those two. So let's figure out, we had a height right there, that was a lowercase h going up there, and we had a width from here to here. So let's figure out what those two torques are. Now the torque from the applied force is going to be the strength of the applied force, which is a variable I suppose, times, well, let's see, is it, uh, is it h? I guess it's just gonna be H, right? Because that is our perp. Look at this applied forces line of action. There's H and that's our perp for the situation. So it says, fa. And the right side then is the torque of mg, that's the force of mg times where mg acts in terms of its line of action. This distance right here is our perp for mg and that's just W over two. So we get tipping and here's my tipping condition. Tipping if, tipping, and this is just about to tip, so it's a critical situation, if the applied force times H is greater than or equal to M times G times the width of the cup or box divided by two. But what about slipping? When does slipping happen? Well, slipping is easy. So here we go. We've got an applied force here, and we've got a frictional force here, and we just need to, what did I call it, F sub A? Okay, we just need to compare those two. If the net force in the X direction is zero or just slightly above zero, then we're gonna have motion and that'll be slipping and it won't be F sub S, it'll turn into F sub K. But I'm looking at trying to, after, after it will be F sub K. But I'm looking at <clears throat> what if it just begins to slip. So that means we are able to apply the maximum static friction force. So I say if F applied is greater than or equal to F S max, then we get slipping. Spip it? Holy cow. Slipping. We get slipping in that case, and of course, that means if F sub A is greater than or equal to mu sub S times mg, because that's the greatest value that F sub S could ever have. Now, all we need to do is try to put our information about tipping and slipping next to each other and figure out what that means. So here's how we do that. I'm gonna start with that statement there where F sub A, this is slipping, okay? And then I'm gonna write down the condition for tipping and see how they interact with each other. I've got uh, 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 tipping. Tipping is giving me F sub A is greater than or equal to MGW divided by 2H. So here's the thing, I think I think I need to compare these two terms and then see which one's going to be possible. What about mu sub s mg compared to mgw over 2 times h? What does that mean? Which one of these in which... Wait a second! You're looking at this as I am? What do you see? Kill, 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 kill. Okay, now we've got something going on. What about mu sub s greater than w over 2h? That's the width of the mug or box uh, divided by two times the height of the mug or box. What if mu sub s is greater than that, then I think it won't slip, right? Because the slipping, for slipping, we needed to be more than mu sub s mg. So 
If this is greater, then it will tip. There we go. And if mu sub s is less than w over 2h, then it will slip. It's just not enough friction. So maybe we could, uh, do you want to even go a step further? Oh, you can stop right now if you want to. I, I can definitely see why you might be a little bit frustrated with where we're going here. But what if, what if mu sub s equals one? What if we have a nice frictional surface? In that case, we'd be arguing that if two times the height is greater than the width, then we've got something that will tip. Where did the force go? Oh yeah, we're gonna have to apply a force at some height. And I don't mean the actual height of the uh, box. I was very misleading right here. H was where we were applying that horizontal force. So it doesn't matter how tall the actual box is. What matters is where we apply that tipping force. Now it may be impossible to actually apply a force at an adequate height. So let's see, this is the applied force. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Two times H. If I say I have a box here with some width and its actual height is two times the width, then in that case, this, uh, this thing could tip, right? Okay, then in that case, this guy would be possible to tip over. But if I have a box where the height, the overall height, is less than two times the width, it's gonna slide every time, regardless of how much static friction there is. I mean, assuming you don't have a static friction more than one then it will slide. So, boxes this side right here are theoretically impossible to tip, unless, of course, you put a little block in front of it, in which case, they'll tip. So, if the width is also the same thing as the height, you can't flip that sucker. Unless you hit a, a patch of, of uh, you know, Velcro-y floor on this edge or something. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, so we're rolling now, so whenever you want to get that set up. Yeah. <clears throat> you ready? Yep. Is that a good spot? Mm hmm Okay. So, oh. <laughs> tell me. I changed my mind. Ah, <laughs> Are ah. you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it hurts so bad. Why